Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm out here to install a weight distribution hitch from Waysafe. I've been using Waysafe hitches for a little while now, and I absolutely love having the gauge built in. I have one on my bumper pull, I've got one on my gooseneck, and when I load something up, I can immediately tell whether I have it centered on the trailer properly, and if it's going to exceed the ratings on my truck, and I really feel like that comes in handy and it's a safety feature. Today, we're upgrading to a weight distribution hitch on the dump trailer. And this is really a big one because it doesn't just tell you, it actually goes forward in solving the problem of making sure your weight is properly distributed. Weight distribution hitches have been around for quite a while and they've evolved over time because that's how everything works, right? So they originally had that, like a chain system and you could hook the chains on different lengths for different amounts of distribution. But Waysafe, I would say, is at the cutting edge of revolutionizing this industry because they've got the gauge on it and they have an app and you put in a bunch of information about your truck and your trailer and your hitch and it tells you exactly how much weight you should have. And you don't have to take anything apart. You simply crank a, a bolt on the top to adjust your weight. It's phenomenal. Uh, when I first got my other two way safe hitches, I did a video about those, and that video has gotten a lot of views. I contacted WaySafe and showed them the video. They said they love what I'm doing, and they wanted to support the channel and support the viewers, so they've given me a discount code. You can purchase any WaySafe products and get 15% off by using the code ROCKHILL. And who doesn't like a little savings, right? So let's go ahead and get this thing set up and see how it works. So step one of the process of installing this is to find out how much your trailer weighs and how much tongue weight you have so that you can use those numbers in setting up the hitch. Step two is disconnect the trailer so that you can level out the trailer and you know, as I went through, I watched a bunch of videos on setting this up, I read the manual, and I got a little frustrated, and I thought I wasn't going to be able to use this. But I took a step back and looked at it for about an hour, and figured out I can still use this. The problem was, the bars that actually come down the side and put the pressure to lift up on your trailer, were going to hit in a bad spot on this toolbox. But I think I've figured out a good solution that will make this still work well. So we'll cover that as we get to it. Right now, it's a matter of unhooking this, pulling the truck forward, and setting the trailer up on its own. Okay, now in the next step is where the magic happens. This is the actual head unit. This is your gauge telling you how much pin weight you have and how much adjusted weight you have. And here's your adjustment knob. So step one is to remove this pin right here and insert the ball. For my other way safe hitch, bumper hitch, I've got two balls. They look almost exactly like this. I think this one's a little taller, but I've got the, the two inch and the two and five sixteenths so you can switch them out put that in here and tighten this all the way down I don't have a torque wrench out here it says 30 pounds but we're gonna get it get her good and snug it probably would be smart to use a torque wrench but I'm just not that smart I guess at this point, if you don't know your tongue weight, you're supposed to put this onto your truck and measure the tongue weight. But I already measured it with my other hitch. I know I've got 1,400 pounds of tongue weight. The next thing you want to do is level out your trailer. So we're going to take a tape measure and measure the bottom of the trailer front and back and adjust the, the jack until we're level. Looks like we got a little over 23 inches there. We're at 23 inches at the front and 16 at the back, so we got a long way to go, but I could tell that without a tape measure. 
you know, as I look at this and I measure it and I try to get it leveled out, it makes me think about all the unsafe acts I've had or the times that is when I didn't feel safe towing. And I realize I've never ran this thing anywhere close to level. It's always been at least eight inches higher in the front than the back. And I just didn't realize it. The next step now is determining how high we want to set the ball on the truck. So you're going to measure from the ground to the top of this hitch. We've got 16 inches here. Then they've got a formula that tells you how much higher than that your ball should be. And it depends on the weight of your trailer. For my setup at 1400 pounds, I need to be about two inches higher. So the top of my ball on the back of the truck needs to be at 18 inches. So now I believe the next step is to go ahead and put this head unit onto the truck and set the ball to 18 inches. As we get further along, there'll be a spot in the app where it saves all this information for a certain truck and trailer. So if you have multiple trucks and multiple trailers that you use this, you won't have to measure this every time and go through this whole process. You'll open up the app and it'll show you that you're on the fourth hole on your truck, on the receiver. As I was leveling out the trailer, I couldn't believe how low I had to get the, the front of the trailer. I was concerned that maybe I wouldn't be able to get this ball low enough. But whenever I come back here and measure it where it sits, we are at 17 and a half, which is actually exactly where we should be. So I think I'm gonna use the hitch that's in here. Quick story about these hitches. They have two options to choose from, which gives you a four total hitch combinations. You can get a two inch shaft here or a two and a half. You can get a six inch drop or an eight inch drop. I have a two and a half inch, six inch drop on the truck now. This is a two inch, eight inch drop. So they were out of the, the two and a half inch, eight inch drop. So I got the higher drop with this hitch to make sure that I could get low enough if I needed to. But this two and a half inch shaft gives you more capacity. So this is a 15,000 pound capacity and this is a 20,000 pound capacity. These are completely interchangeable. And since I know that this one is tall enough or goes low enough, I'm gonna go ahead and use the heavier capacity hitch. So just keep that in mind. You can order two or two and a half inch diameter. Your two inch is a lower weight rating. Then you've got six or eight inch drop. Six inch drop is enough for my 2500 on that dump trailer that sits pretty low. So it's probably enough for you, but just factor that in. When I ordered this with a two inch shaft, that means you have to use an adapter up to this two and a half inch receiver. And rather than the normal adapter, I got the Waysafe anti-rattle receiver reducer. So that goes on here and it's got a plate I think it goes this way. It's got a plate that goes on here and you bolt it down and that takes all your rattle and vibration out of your receiver. So even if you're not using one of these, if you're adapting from a two inch to a two and a half inch, I would recommend this anti-rattle receiver adapter. Anything you can do to take the vibration out, right? So we're going to leave this, but we do need to take the ball off. And all of these use these key to light keys. I'll still use this with my other trailers because this is the only one of my bumper pull trailers that really needs a weight distribution hitch. And that's a whole separate conversation of when do you need a weight distribution hitch. And a lot of truck owner's manuals will give you advice on that. Saying, uh, some say like a half ton truck, it'll say 5,000 pounds you need a weight distribution hitch. So that's something to keep in mind. This isn't just some crazy aftermarket idea that companies have to use these waste weight distribution hitches. It's in the owner's manual of every truck, I believe, or most trucks. So I've heard 5,000 pounds and up need weight distribution. I've also heard a rule of thumb that if your trailer is 50% of the GVWR, 
but that's going to give you about that same 5,000 pound number. See how high we are. So this one sets a little bit higher. This is at 20 inches. So I am going to drop this, this down to the bottom hole. Now we've got the ball set in and we're about two inches higher than the top of the hitch on the trailer. The only thing I'll say about putting this on is it's heavy. And it was kind of a struggle to get it lined up with these holes. So the next time I take this off, I'm gonna put a little bit of lube in that track so it goes a little smoother. All right, let's go back to the instructions and see what's next. The next step of the process is where I was concerned I wouldn't be able to use this hitch on this trailer, and it's because of the placement of this toolbox. A dump trailer is not the most common use for a weight distributing hitch. Normally, these are used, number one, on campers and RVs that have a lot of sway to them and can be affected by the wind, and they can be longer. But I think this also qualifies as needing it because it's just so heavy. This is fully loaded. It's 14,000 pounds, if not a little more. So the next step of the instructions say, you put your tape measure in the center of the ball, and you come down 32 inches, and you install the mounting arms. Well, that puts us dead center in this toolbox. It says if you don't have the opportunity to place it at 32 inches, you can place it anywhere along the way at a minimum of 27 inches. Well, 27 inches puts us right here. So I decided, I guess I'll just move the toolbox back. I could have moved it back enough that I could have got the arms on it at about 27, 20, 27 to 28 inches. And then I gave it some more thought. So let me show you how these go on. You use these shoulder bolts, top and bottom, to build this little bracket right here. And you clamp that onto the frame of the trailer. And then from there, you have your arms that actually hold up the weight distributing arms. Weight distribution arms. I'm saying that wrong every time, I think. So, and those will go on here. So I sat here and looked at it and I said, all right, I'm going to find someone who's got an RV and I'm going to demonstrate this product on an RV first. And I might still do that actually. But what I realized is that this box doesn't cause an obstacle to me mounting these arms. I've already done the other side. All I did was drill a hole for that bolt to go through. And I drilled a hole at the bottom for this bar to go through. And this is gonna mount on exactly the same as if that toolbox wasn't there. The toolbox is not holding the weight of this. This never pivots or moves. So I don't think having this bolt pass through here is going to affect this, the use of this at all. So I gave it some thought and I've already installed the other side. Looks like it's gonna work just fine. Now I've got this second arm bolted on. Have it, having it all done now, I really feel pretty good about running this through the box. And it's not gonna hurt the box because I only drilled this top hole the size it needs to be. And the bottom already has drain holes, so we're not gonna have any water issues. And it's not gonna affect the integrity of the box. It shouldn't affect the hitch, so we should be good. The next thing we're going to do is put on these arms. These are done from a measurement that this foot right here should be nine inches lower than your receiver or your ball. So I'll tighten these up and we'll move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna put on the sway control arms. So there's a pin into the, in this bracket down here. We'll pull that pin out, stick the arm in, swivel that out because we're gonna do some measurements with these arms swiveled out 90 degrees. 
these are hard to swivel and that's intentional because that's part of your sway control Now that the trailer's hooked up and these arms are swung out 90 degrees, I need to open up the WaySafe app, input a few measurements like the trailer weight, the tongue weight, the distance between that bar and the rear axle of the truck, the distance between the bar and the center line of these two axles on the trailer. And once I enter all that information, it will tell me the distributed tongue weight I need on this gauge when we're done. So let me check that app out real quick and see what we get. So that took me about two minutes to take all those measurements. And like I said before, I don't have to take these measurements every time. If I forget, it'll be saved on the app. Otherwise, I just not have to know what the gauge needs to say with this trailer. One interesting thing is that just by leveling the trailer out, my tongue weight went from 1,400 pounds to 1,600 pounds. So, that's just a difference of having the load level actually shifts more weight onto the truck and puts me already up to my payload capacity with just me in the vehicle, no tools, no other passengers, just this trailer and me puts me at payload. So I put all this information in here. I told it my tongue weight, my trailer weight, my pin weight, my measurements. It says my gauge needs to read 2,450 pounds. So that'll be the next step. Is we, we have to get the arms up onto these platforms and then dial in our weight measurement. This step right here really underscores what this product does. You can see right here that this arm has to get up here and that doing that is going to transfer the weight from there back to here with a series of adjustments and using the weight safe gauge. The next step is to get these arms up onto here and I can't just lift them. It says there's two ways to do it. You can either jack the trailer up until these will go on, or you take this tool, put this into a square hole here, and use it for leverage. So let's try that. Okay, that's in position. Seemed to work. I have to keep your hands back. Next, I think we're going to put the retainers on that. Yep. So then, to hold that in place, this drops through, and then you put a pin through. Now one side's locked in, I'll do the other side, then we can start our adjustment. The last step is to get this gauge to read 2,450 pounds. It's about 2,300 pounds whenever I put it on, so it shouldn't take a whole lot of adjustment to get this dialed in. So you can use a ratchet instead of this tool that they provide, but it's, it's a multi-purpose tool that you need for the springs. And since I don't have very far to go, I'll just use it real quick. So setup wasn't bad. Once again, this is not an ideal trailer that this hitch is designed for. It's really designed for your bigger campers and travel trailers, but I think it's gonna provide me a lot of stability and sway control. So I'm really excited to put this to use. I don't really want to give a review of this until I've ran it a little bit. And if I find out I made any mistakes during the installation, that will be in the description and the pinned comment. If I find out any safety issues or I have trouble, and if say I don't recommend this anymore, hypothetically, that'll be in the, the description and the pinned comment. That's always a good place to get updates if you're considering setting something like this up. So, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Once I've had time to run this a little bit, I'll do a follow-up and a review video. I'll put a couple more of our videos on the screen over here, and I'll see you next time.